Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. So today's gospel is quite a special gospel. And what happens is that Jesus, just before he's about to get um, arrested and crucified, he prays for the disciples, he prays for the church, he prays for us. And so what I find, you know, quite amazing is how, you know, in Jesus' last moments here on earth, he doesn't think so much about himself, but he thinks about the people that he's about to leave behind. And so what I want to do in today's gospel reflection is just take three parts of this prayer and shine light on it and um, really you know, help you guys uh, see you know, the importance of these parts of the prayer and what it means for us. So the first part of the prayer which I want to bring to your attention is from verses 12 to 13 of um, John chapter 17. So Jesus says, while I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and none of them is lost by the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Some of what Jesus you know, taught and preached can sound very challenging. But also a lot of the things that Jesus said and did brings so much joy to the people that were there at the time. And it brings joy for us too. Because what did Jesus do? You know, Jesus did so many things that expresses the unconditional love of God. You know, he sat with the sinners, you know, he, he made them feel unrejected, he made them feel that they, they he made them feel loved, he made them no longer feel isolated. And so this love of God is also for us here today in times when we feel rejected in times when we feel isolated even when we feel that our own parents our own family is against us and no longer loves us Jesus's love is so unconditional it's constant and it's unchanging even in our imperfections Jesus's love flourishes the love of the father is there to flourish in us even in our sinfulness and Jesus, of course, showed this with you know those, those um, who are marginalized, like I said, from society. He never rejected them. And this love is what brings us joy because as humans, we all desire to be loved. Love brings us happiness, but you know there is no joy that can compare to the love that God gives us. The next verse which I want to bring to your attention is verses 16 to 17. So Jesus says this, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. So here Jesus reminds us of our identity. Now as Christians, as followers of Jesus, much of what we follow and stand by doesn't often you know, correlate or you know, connect with what society teaches or the moralities of society. And so what that means you know, is that as followers of Christ we are to be separated from this world and you know sometimes following Jesus following what uh, our faith teaches it require it's a big cost but there's a great reward in the cost in that often we will be hated by society and Jesus himself reminds us this reminds us of this he says you know the world hated you will hate you because they hated me first you know, back then when Jesus preached, many people disagreed with what Jesus said, especially the Pharisees and Sadducees. And the same is here today. Many people disagree with the teachings of our faith, with the teachings of Jesus. But like I said, all of that comes with a cost. But with a great cost also comes a great reward. So as Jesus prays today, you know, in this part of the prayer, you know, let us you know, be rooted in Christ, you know, in the Father. And let us always just keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because our reward will come. Our reward is not in this world, but it's in the world to come. The final part of the prayer, which I want to bring some light on, is verse 18. So Jesus says, As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for, those, and for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in the truth. So what Jesus is reminding us is that just as the Father has sent Jesus into the world and likewise Jesus sends us out into the world. 
So Jesus came into this world to bring the good news, to bring uh, to bring people to repentance and to also embrace the love of God to them all and to show them the love of God. So that very mission is also given to us today to go out, to bring the good news to the people, to bring people to repentance and to remind them that God loves them unconditionally and to live a life that is pleasing and, accor and according to God. There's something that I truly believe. And that is that Jesus has given us souls to be responsible for. And um, I may have said this in a previous video, but there are people that Jesus gives in our lives that he wants us to be able to nurture and to be able to you know, share his love to them and be able to bring them to a life with Christ. And we all have you know, this kind of responsibility to carry out. And so this is our mission. And this is the common purpose for all Christians. That is to be able to spread the good news to those around us, to those whom we meet, to those whom we love, and to be able to give hope to those who feel hopeless. And so this is a very important part of Jesus' prayer. Because just as he is about to now get crucified and go through his passion and then leave this earth, we have to now carry on the same mission that Jesus had started, the same uh, work that Jesus had started. We are to now carry that on in this world. Thank you guys for listening. So those were you know, the three parts of Jesus' prayer which I wanted to share some, shed some light on. I hope you know, those parts of the prayer really do mean something to you and I hope you know, that that prayer of Jesus himself, you know, I hope it transforms you in some way. Thank you guys once again for listening. Have a great week ahead. God bless.